Google held an event today where they announced the Pixel 9, Pixel 9 Pro, Pixel 9 Pro XL, Pixel 9 Pro Fold, the Pixel Watch 3, and the Pixel Buds Pro 2. I know, it's a lot. I was fortunate enough to get hands on with these guys just a little bit early, and I gotta say, I am impressed, so I'm gonna share with you a couple of my thoughts. So this year, you may or may not have noticed, but Google switched things up just a little bit by launching their phones slightly earlier this year. And that's not the only switch because they've made some pretty key changes to these phones, both inside and out. As I touched on previously, this year we've got a total of four phones. So you've got the Pixel 9, the Pixel 9 Pro, Pixel 9 Pro XL, which I'll touch on later, and the Pixel 9 Pro Fold. And so looking at these phones, you can tell right off the hop that Google made some pretty big changes here. And it's kind of ironic because they've switched the phones up a lot while making them oddly familiar. Yeah. So the first new yet familiar change is the squared off design, so no more curved edges. And with the antenna placement, it kind of looks very similar to the iPhone and Samsung Galaxies of last year. Now there was no mention of titanium, so at least there's that, but all jokes aside, I'm actually very much for this design. I just find that it looks a lot better. It feels great to hold these phones in your hands, and I don't know if it makes it feel just a little bit more balanced because I'm definitely sure that these phones are heavier than last year, but it just feels better to hold. For the last couple of years, it's been easy to pick out a Pixel because of its Ninja Turtle camera band on on the back, but this year they've actually made a change to that too. So the camera bar no longer stretches the entire width of the back of the phone. It's got rounded edges on the sides and sports this new matte finish instead of the old glossy look. And I think it pairs very well with the soft touch glass on the back of these phones. Now on the front of these phones, we're also seeing slightly smaller bezels, which means that we have an increase in screen size. So on the Pixel 9 and Pixel 9 Pro, you've got a screen size of 6.3 inches, whereas on the Pixel 9 Pro XL, we're seeing 6.8. And as if last year wasn't crazy enough, they've also increased the brightness on each of the panels. So on the Pixel 9, you're going to see 2,700 nits of brightness, while the Pro models are now capable of up to 3,000 nits of brightness. I mean, that's insane. Now, as you can expect, we've also seen a slight bump in battery sizes. So the smaller phones are going to have a 4,700 milliamp hour battery, whereas the XL has 5,060. Now, what's especially crazy is that Google's claiming up to 100 hours of battery life while using the extreme battery saver mode. So no big deal, just a casual four days of battery when you truly need it. As far as the colors go, you'll be able to grab the Pixel 9 in obsidian, porcelain, wintergreen, and this peony color, which looks really nice. And while the 9 Pro is available also in obsidian and porcelain, you'll also be able to pick it up in hazel and rose quartz. And I gotta say, I'm a huge fan of the hazel color. Powering everything on the inside, we've got the brand new Google Tensor G4, which is good because there's a lot of new AI features, as well as the Titan M2 security chip that we're used to. It's still strange to me that in 2024, these phones are starting off at 128 gigs of storage, especially knowing that because these cameras are so top tier, your storage storage always fills up so quickly, but hey, to each their own. But at least all the phones received a four gigabyte boost in memory. So the Pixel 9 comes in at 12 gigabytes of RAM while the Pro models come in at 16. So people were confused with the leaks of the Pixel 9 XL thinking that Google had made this brand new, much larger phone. And that's actually not quite the case. This right here is obviously the Pixel 8 Pro and it's actually the same size and form factor of the Pixel 9 Pro XL. And so if you're following, that means the Pixel 9 Pro is actually the new form factor. So essentially all that Google did here was give people the option Option of buying their pro phone without forcing them to have the larger form factor. Because at the end of the day, just because you want better cameras, it doesn't necessarily mean that you want a larger phone or a larger phone screen. So if you want that extra lens with more RAM and a better display and just more shooting capabilities overall, you're no longer forced to pick up this guy here. You can grab something that's a little bit smaller, fits into your pants just a little bit better and still get the best that Google has to offer. Now, moving on to the cameras, they didn't just change the look of the camera module. They actually put in some pretty big upgrades here as well, especially if you're someone that doesn't care about the pro models. So on the regular Pixel 9, you're still seeing that 50 megapixel wide lens. But the ultra wide is now a 48 megapixel with an aperture of 1.7 opposed to 2.2 of last year. And while that front camera is largely the same, Google's finally taken the hint from other manufacturers and threw in autofocus. And as for the pros, the camera specs are pretty similar from a physical standpoint, but the phones are now capable of 20x super res zoom and 8K recording at 30 FPS. I don't know who actually needs 8K recording at this point, but at least you have it. Now, obviously because it's Google, they did announce some pretty cool AI features. And unfortunately, I can't demo those for you now because I don't have the phones. So after having the chance to mess around with all these phones for about an hour, I have to say that I am truly impressed with what Google's doing here. And I know what people are going to say. The phone industry is getting boring now. Everything looks the exact same. It's hard to tell the difference between iPhone, Samsung, and now Pixel. But in my opinion, when it comes to Pixel, I think they're always going to have a leg up on the camera quality. And they're always going to have a leg up on just
just the overall user experience. But unfortunately, until I get hands on my personal phone, I can't really give you guys too much more information and not having the phone plus everything dropping on staggered dates, you're just gonna have to come back for some more info. But either way, if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them all down below and I'll be sure to answer you. But that's pretty much it for me. So much love as always, throwing up two of them and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.